Hello folks, welcome back to Cognitive Awareness with a Touch of God podcast. Today's episode 13, we're going to be talking about what is abuse. So first and foremost, folks, abuse has many faces. It comes in many different forms. It could be physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional, spiritual, internal, external, inward, outward. I mean, you can come up with many more other than that. Abuse, in essence, is letting someone or something intentionally hurt us in some way, shape, or form. It can be something like a single instance, or it could be repetitive. Think of it like this. Someone saying, they hit me, or they hit me again. One is a single instance, the other one is repetitive. They hit me again. They call me a loser, or they keep calling me names. So there's abuse in a single form. They called me a loser. And in the repetitive form, which is they keep calling me names. So it's a practice of a corrupt sort of behavior. Not in politics, folks. We're talking human behavior. Corrupt, meaning something that's going to tend to drive the negativity out. My boss keeps telling me I'm stupid. What kind of a scenario would that be? I mean, first it's unprofessional, but then it's unkind and it's very disturbing. My boss keeps telling me I'm stupid. That's something to leave. They keep getting dense in the car. They keep getting dense in the car as a practice of that behavior. They don't clean up after themselves. That is also a repetitive style. How about I can't stop using or I'll buy just one more. Let me get one more drink. So corrupt behaviors, meaning not political, but very destructive. And sometimes it can seem like something else, like it's not even an abuse. Oh, it's okay. I don't mind cleaning up after them. Or I'm such an idiot. Or, well, you know, weed is better than smoking crack. So no matter how it looks, guys, it is still the same thing. The good thing is that they can all be fixed the same way. Because they're all the same thing, they are all abuses. Therefore, if I can fix one abuse, it's going to work for all the other abuses. All solutions for abuse start from our beliefs. It's internal. How we believe is how we live. It all starts with a belief that we're not deserving of goodness or good things in life or happiness or healthiness or abundance. We then begin to think that we're not deserving. Then after our thoughts become our emotions and we have emotions that feel like we're not deserving. Then we start choosing words that instill to us or others that we're not deserving. Then we ultimately take actions to complete our non-deserving belief. Everything we do is because of a belief. So check this out. Belief. I believe I'm a loser. Therefore my thought should come up, Ah, I'm no good. I'm worthless which will drive an emotion or emotions kind of like, you know, I'm feeling lifeless, I'm lost, I'm feeling abandoned, like nobody's there for me or I can't do anything. And then we choose words that we speak. I can't do anything right. I'm always messing up. I'm such a loser. Which then, of course, means that we're probably going to act in that same manner. We get into drugs to numb the pain, we drink, we hide, we become a recluse, not being around our friends anymore. So there's a lot of physical things that come from our belief system. So here's an example of changing that, or at least seeing the result of work and healing from a destructive belief system. The belief could come out like this. I am worthy and deserving of good things. And if you have that belief, then there's a good chance your thoughts might be more like, I can recover. I am a good person. I can love and I am deserving of being loved. Which then, of course, if you're thinking like that, your emotions usually will follow along with that. Meaning, this feels good, man. I'm so happy. I'm elated. I'm proud of myself for stopping. I can't wait for tomorrow. Beautiful emotions that flow through beautiful thoughts with a beautiful belief. With that, then the words we speak are going to follow along. Man, this is going to be a great day. I can see clearly now. I am clean and sober. I have a great job. I love how I look and feel today. And then our actions, of course. If we've got those kinds of words that we're speaking, saying happy things and thinking happy things, we're going to end up tending to do happy things like smiling, shaking people's hands, doing that pay it forward thing, saying hello, giving hugs, walking with a little pep in your step, sharing moments, and just being. So you get that trend, folks? If your belief starts in negativity, Your thoughts, emotions, your words, and your actions are going to be based on negativity. But if your belief is that you're worthy and caring and and deserving, then your thoughts, emotions, words that you speak, and your actions are always going to be in that same line. Here's the deal. 
If you believe that you're worthy, but you keep doing drugs, then your belief system isn't real. You are not solid in your belief. I, I deserve to be healthy, clean, and sober. Yet, I'm going to go out and smoke a joint, or I'm going to go get wasted, or I'm going to get high. I mean, folks, that just tells us that you may be thinking that you have a belief that is clean and sober, but your thoughts are not congruent with it. They don't match up. And if your thoughts don't match your belief, then your emotions and your words and your actions will follow the negative. Our job is to focus on the belief system, the believing, and not only just saying that I believe something, you have to believe it deep in your heart and soul. It has to be something that you're going to keep and that you cherish. So what do we do if we're being abused in any way, shape, or form? The only way to stop abuse is to stop allowing it to happen. You cannot control anything outside of you. So we have to be responsible for our own safety and get away from it. And what is the source of your abuse? Well, guys, find it. Find out what the abuse is. I gave you plenty of examples. Let's check this out. Find it and get away from it. Recovery programs. These things are designed to get you away from your usual habits and behaviors and where you usually go. Oh, I'm always over here to get my fix. I'm always over there to that package store. I'm always over here to get laid. I'm always getting in fights over there. It's like, well, then keep yourself away from it. If someone is hitting you, there is no excuse for that. No matter where, when, or how, there's no excuse for physical abuse. Leave. No matter what's going to happen tomorrow, you need to stay healthy now. And nothing, no matter how much you're emotionally connected or in our previous podcast about attachments, no matter how attached you are to the person, if they're swinging at you and hitting you, male, female, doesn't matter. There's no reason whatsoever to be with them. It's not for the betterment of your children. Because if your children start seeing you get abused, then guess what they're thinking of and their belief system is. Oh, it must be okay for me to be abused. So maybe after he stops hitting you, they can come over and hit me. Folks, you can't have an excuse for physical abuse. If you get high with friends, try to stay away from them. Because you know what's going to happen? Peer pressure. Peer pressure and then more peer pressure. If you smoke cigarettes and on your way to work, try leaving your smokes at home. Try leaving the pack there. Guys, everything requires one step at a time. And if you can leave your pack of cigarettes at the house and go to work, and then on your way to work, you go, man, I really, really need it. I know I left them at home. I'm trying to kick the habit. I left them at home. Can I stop? No, let me try to go to work. You can understand that it's an attempt. We got to take baby steps first. Try simple things like leaving the smokes at home. Walk away from them for a moment or 10 or 20. Then when you're at work, if you feel this incredible desire because your detox is hurting, you know, then go to the store, borrow a cigarette from somebody. You guys do it already. Bum a smoke. It's what we do when we don't have one. So get a smoke. Take care of that for the moment. But also remember, I left my smokes at home. Good job. Good job. If you drive by a liquor store and you're an alcoholic and you're driving by a liquor store on your way home, here's a simple solution, guys. Try and find another path home. Take a different street. Go away from where you're attracted to. If you don't see it, you may have a chance to not feel it. If your family's abusive, leave them. Get out of it. Find a healthy place to stay. There's churches, synagogues, there's shelters, YMCAs, there's friends, there's neighbors, there's teachers and police departments. Anything just so you can take a break. No matter how much family they are, abuse is abuse, and you don't have to take it. So we need to understand that the abuse stems from within us and is not the outside influence. Outside actions may be taking place, but if we had a stronger belief system in place and if we were dead set on the way we believe is the way we're going to think, act, and feel, then we can be okay, and we wouldn't be putting ourselves in those situations to begin with. If you felt loving and loved, then you wouldn't be seeking bad relationships time after time. Oh, I'm just here for the sex. Well, good for you, man. Why don't you love yourself first? Get that sorted out. Be good with yourself and who you are. Then you're actually going to attract the person that can respect you for that and that you can respect them for who they are. Your relationship can be built on a mutual understanding of I love myself, therefore I can love you. Now, nothing is going to be cured overnight. It's not a snap of a finger unless you have this strange ability to go cold turkey. But we all know, as addicts to everything and recovering from them, we all know that when we're trying to cold turkey, there's going to be a detox level. 
depending on what you're trying to get away from, the abuse you're trying to get away from, there's going to be a detox level for it. Let's just use uh, physical abuse. So if you've been hit many times and your partner just keeps telling you, I love you, I'm sorry, I love you, I'm sorry, I love you, I'm sorry, here, I'm gonna hit you again, and you break free of that, you leave that situation, your detox could be in the emotional dependency state, the attachment to that physical being and that person in your life. And that would be the hardest detox to go through. Oh, I can't be without them. I, I have no job. I have no education. I have nowhere to go. I have no family. I have no friends. Understand, detox is going to be as hard as your level of belief dysfunction is going to be. So if you can change your belief system like, I can do this on my own. I am deserving of not being hit. I'm a good person and a loving person. Therefore, I don't deserve to be physically abused. If you believe that deep in your heart and you follow that path, then you're not going to find another person like that. Or if you do, you're going to recognize it and you'll be able to walk away quicker. I know it seems like such a long way to the state of happiness, but remember guys, you didn't get where you are today with the snap of a finger. It's going to take time. The good thing is that you have time. You've taken the time to listen. You've taken the time to be on social media to reach out. You've asked your doctors, you've asked your priests, you've asked your friends, you've asked your neighbors, you've asked your teachers, and whatever it took for you to give yourself a fighting chance and to try getting clean and sober or healing from your abuses. So you have time. Let's take the time. Thank you very much. I hope you listen in to the next podcast. I am so grateful that I can share everything I can give to you in this format. I prefer this instead of typing all the time. <laughs> so you might see these podcasts more than you'll see me typing something. So enjoy, folks. Good luck to you all. God bless you. We are with you 100% of the time. We know what it's like to go through it. We know what the pains are. We know what the recovery is. We know what detox feels like. And we know it's always better once we get past it. Keep those beliefs strong and may God bless you. Thank you.